Let's take a break from our earthly concerns and briefly visit the calm blackness of space. Starlink is a satellite ISP being built by SpaceX. Unlike today's satellite ISPs that have a handful of satellites in geosynchronous orbit, Starlink plans to build a constellation of over 10,000 small satellites in low Earth orbits. This will allow Starlink to provide dramatically higher bandwidth and lower latency than existing competitors. Assuming they can get everything working, Starlink should be a major advance for internet in rural areas. However, some people have extrapolated what Starlink can do a little too far, and in this video I'm going to look at three miracles that Starlink probably won't deliver. Anytime Starlink is mentioned on the internet, I see comments about it bringing competition to monopolistic and stagnant wired ISPs, like Comcast. Given Starlink's claims of gigabit bandwidth, and 20 milliseconds of latency, I can understand how that might sound competitive or even better than what wired ISPs offer. But this doesn't take into account the overall capacity of the system. Here's an analysis of several satellite ISP constellations from a team at MIT from one year ago. There are lots of caveats to this because it's based on public information and SpaceX is constantly changing the design of Starlink, so anything we say about it will be out of date next month. But let's treat this as a rough order of magnitude estimate. The MIT team calculated that Starlink will have a total system capacity of 24 terabits per second. I assume that's for the entire planet Earth. So how does 24 terabits compare to existing ISPs? A company called Telegeography studies this kind of thing, and they put out a blog post in August saying that the internet currently has 466 terabits of capacity, which is almost exactly 20 times as much as the estimate for Starlink. So a very rough way to think about it is that Starlink could support one out of every 20 internet subscribers. If everybody in your city got Starlink, it would be totally saturated. And the legacy ISPs know this. It's likely that just all the rural customers will max out Starlink. So how will this bottleneck manifest in practice? Either Starlink is gonna be more expensive than wired internet, so only people who can't get anything else will sign up, or it will have some kind of bandwidth caps or throttling. If people have a choice between unlimited wired service or capped Starlink, that will keep most people on wired internet. Another way to look at this is that Starlink would have to be over 20 times bigger to replace the wired ISPs of 2019. By 2025, internet demand will have grown, so let's say Starlink needs to be 50 times bigger than the original plan. You have to admire the audacity, at least. By the way, in the Elon's being Elon department, Telegeography found a pretty outrageous quote from the man himself. The goal will be to have the majority of long-distance internet traffic go over this network. And you wonder why NASA is auditing you for drug use. Because Starlink has many small satellites, each one covers a small area on the ground. So when your packets go up from your house to the satellite, they might have to bounce from satellite to satellite a few times to get to the nearest ground station. This gives people some wacky ideas, like maybe people in China could connect to Starlink, which would then route their traffic over to a free country like Japan and thus bypass the Great Firewall or any other kind of government control. I'm sure this is theoretically possible, but it's not gonna happen. The political reason it won't happen is because China and other countries would make it illegal to use Starlink, and then why would SpaceX want to sell a service that just gets its customers thrown in prison? And the technical reason is that the more hops each packet takes, the more congestion it causes, and the more it costs SpaceX. They want to downlink traffic as close to the customer as possible for better performance and lower cost. So in reality, I expect all Starlink traffic to downlink in the same country as the customer, for both cost and legal reasons. And if a country doesn't allow Starlink, then SpaceX can just turn off service over that country. I know I'm crushing your dreams, but we have to learn that even Elon's internet can't fix your broken government. High frequency traders have made a lot of money building very low latency paths between the financial markets of Chicago, New Jersey, London, Frankfurt, etc. If you want to connect Chicago to New Jersey, you put up towers every so many miles and connect them with point-to-point -point microwave links. The microwaves travel at the speed of light, 
and you only need permission for the towers. You don't have to deal with all the farmers that your signal is passing over. Crossing the ocean is a totally different problem because microwaves can't reach that far. Right now, I guess high frequency traders are mostly using undersea fiber, but some people got the idea of going up instead. If you're going 3,500 miles from New Jersey to London, going a few hundred miles into space and back down isn't that far out of your way. And Professor Mark Handley did the calculation showing that it should be a little bit faster than fiber under certain assumptions. Again, technically, I don't see why this wouldn't work, but remember that normal Starlink service will probably downlink in the same country. So if you want to cross the ocean, we're talking about a special deal. Why would SpaceX sell that for less than all the profit the traders are going to make? On the other hand, selling shovels has always been a good business model. So maybe SpaceX can sell a special HFT plan to different traders for something like $1 billion and let them fight over whatever profits they can try to eke out. The jury's still out on this one.